let's begin with, I, I have to say personally, having attended several council meetings now, I do understand the logic of the, the three minute uh, per public comment. Um, and I also understand that if we have to engage in any uh, dialogue, that should probably not be in the public comment section. But um, any other issues that any member of the public wants to discuss with uh, the ADA coordinator or members of the commission, uh, personally, we should do um, outside of the, the meeting and then figure out anything that should be brought into a formal process. And exactly. exactly. So the three minutes that the members can talk, uh, the visitors can talk, you do, do not want the minutes. Or you do. I missed that. A, a public comment. You can add public recorded. comments into the minutes if you want to. We don't. Do you want me to? No. We don't. What, I, what okay. I'm saying is we should not engage in the dialogue exactly. in the public comment. Any dialogue we can meet separately from the actual recorded meeting. Also, we are concerned that if issues are raised by the public, uh, some may not want to have that recorded as the, the camera um, can be intimidating um, to some. So we want to. Um, I think um, we have all of ours. Whoever comes on open public session to any of our meetings, they're taped and they're video. Uh, under normal circumstances, don't we have at least a person's name who came in for public comment? Home. Yeah, yeah, people will identify themselves as public comment. That's fine. Um, do we have any comment from the public today? Um, are we open? Uh, yeah, I can be very quick. Um, my name is Lieutenant Commander Kenneth Richard Pratt. I live at Salvo. I would ask the individuals of the commission to keep in their prayers the name of Rosa Maria Hernandez. She has been diagnosed with cerebral palsy and has been separated from her parents by NICE the uh, Immigration and Customs Immigration. Um, for corroboration, you can Google this or read your newspaper. I think it's a horrible thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, sorry. I remember, I read about that. It, I agree, it is a terrible thing. It, that, I have had it uh, corroborated by um, associate to mine in the Department of Justice. I just should say as a, a point of information, as we are going to be discussing, well, let's first introduce ourselves as um, members of the, the commission. I'm Craig <coughs> Columbus, uh, um, chairperson of the uh, Commission on Disability. I'm going this way, Judy Kimberly, member of the commission. Linda Desmond, ADA coordinator. Ruth McGrath, member of the public. <laughs> ADA Thank Councilor Mary Emma Barge. I'm Jean Page, I'm a member. I'm Deandre Dillon, Smith College student, <laughs> guest. So, okay. Chris, well, I, I just wanted to say, just as a point of information, as we are going to be um, talking about meeting with department heads and, and um, other issues that were relevant, uh, last night I had the opportunity to attend the Attorney General was at uh, the University of Massachusetts, and that was a terrific opportunity um, to hear her discussing many of the concerns um, that um, are, are being faced now in, in terms of violations of civil liberties. Uh, we also did have an, an opportunity to, to um, raise um, one issue uh, related to, to disability, and, um, and, and that was the concern with the uh, um, accessibility related violations of civil rights standards at the House of Corrections. 
the interests of the sheriff in resolving those. And the Attorney General's response was that um, her office will follow up on the content. Hello, it is good to see you. I apologize, uh, it was a little late anyways that they went to the wrong room. Oh. Yes, oh, no. that, that was, but, we put a little additional weight yeah, finding. A little sure. bit, uh, so it's my wife and we just had a baby uh, very recently. Oh, about, oh congratulations. Uh, Jack, congratulations. Yes. So this is our first baby, so yes. we're uh, wow. uh, 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 Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we just had a baby, my wife and I. Yeah. Top. Thank you. Jack Mitchell Winston, latest edition. <laughs> Fabulous. Wow. That's, wow, that's the best that's news we've had. That is. Yeah. That's something time. happy. Yeah. yeah. Chief Leonard Chief, <laughs> introduce yourself as you. Now we do have And now we do have a quorum. Hi, Jim Winston, uh, I'm an attorney in Northampton. Uh, I've, uh, I do a lot of disability. A lot of this topic is, is something I'm passionate about. And, uh, sorry, my and it's been uh, a little bit with my between my office just having a baby, but I'm here uh, happy to uh, contribute in any way I can. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome so back. you want to go back to the minutes? Do you want to do the minutes now or no? Um, I, I want to suggest that we table the minutes, or I should say that the chair will entertain a motion to table the minutes uh, because we have not so had also an alone. opportunity to exactly. Edit. I second. I second that motion. Too. Any discussion? I think so. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All opposed. The motion carries. We will um, review the minutes in the next the next meeting, and we'll have them edited. So the first item on our agenda is to report on yesterday's meeting with the department heads. Would anyone like to, of, of those who uh, attended the meeting yesterday, give some observations? I, I have to say that I knew mostly every department head that was in there because I worked with them. And I think you explained exactly what our road of where we're moving to and what our obligation is with the Commission on Disabilities. Also, I was very happy to hear the mayor when you talked about the grievance process where he had came out with some concerns of privacy. That's important. That I know because as a counselor, we are very, very careful if we have to call somebody in of that privacy. So he was absolutely correct about that, of being aware of that. I agree. Also. I thought that was a tremendously helpful observation. Exactly. By the but you did wonderful things. He's been on top of things. Oh, we do have some copies of the. Uh, um, I can't say that I follow them methodically because methodically is not my way. But we do have some copies of the uh, um, the PowerPoint elements, I think, are yeah. under there, or they may be in that oh, folder. They may be still in the folder. Oh, that's okay. Oh, okay. Um, we tried to roughly follow a few PowerPoints, and um, we also um, had uh, briefly had uh, uh, Wayne um, just indicate the grant that we submitted, which is another point on our agenda. But of the uh, others who were present yesterday, any other observations on what? what yeah, I think did? that it was definitely a, an important first step, and that um, you know because you know it's it's one thing to um, demand well to to request um, a good partnership with the other department heads in relation to areas of, um, that we need to address for disabilities. But if those department have heads do not have that background, um, that education is the first step to make sure to make them accountable. Because it's hard to be accountable for something that you really don't understand. So um, thank you. I think it was really, really an important first step. And I think we still have a lot of education to do, including with myself. And the other thing I thought that was interesting um, 
in reviewing the, um, some of the consultants' um, highlights was that a lot of the department heads did not know who I was as, as the um, ADA coordinator. And I think if I have this role, it's very important that people understand this position. So I, I think it's fair. it was a great um, gathering. I also note that Melissa Marshall, when she did her notes on the interviews that uh, she and Jean did with department heads noted that, mm -hmm. that, that uh, they um, did not know who the ADA coordinator of the city was. So that, that speaks volumes to what we have to do. Uh, uh, Judy, and, and I think that's just another example of our mayor wanting to do the right thing, you know, have the, you know, the department heads know about their obligations under the ADA, know who the, the disability coordinator is, recognize the role of the disability commission. So I think that was really Could I positive. ask you a question? Does everybody have this packet? Or what are we doing with this? There's a few. No, those are just to, oh, to circulate okay. those, sir. We can, we can produce some more copies, but yeah. we arrived almost fashionably okay. late ourselves, so. Um, we can we can provide some additional, but I basically copped the the three copies that uh, uh, were brought of, of Wayne's report and a few of the the notes we made. Um, I was very glad that uh, that Andrew was able to join us both for the meeting yesterday and uh, accompany us over to. The University of Massachusetts uh, last night too, but we didn't have a chance to actually introduce you to the Attorney General. <laughs> but we were very up close in person. Oh yeah, on the front page. You should be front seat. Like on the <laughs> right page. Oh, you were right there. He knew where we sat. Yeah. All we had to do was displace some of the young Democrats from UMass. We grabbed the seats that were up front, and, and, and that they're was very active. And that was great. Yeah. But you know, I mean, it, it's really relevant and, and related. You know, I'm, one of the things that I had said to the departments I was recounting was I met the Attorney General seven or eight years ago when she was Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights. And what we had to do at that time was get the attention in Boston because ADA compliance had really uh, floundered. So what we're doing now, and I also said it's been just really a wonderful experience for me and for Judy to become so much more involved with the city. Yeah. We don't go Boston down the roads to Boston the way we used to, but to you know, bring this and to make this effort within the city. And while we understand that we need to take things step by step with the city, to build things in the separate departments to take our time, and that's not, that's unlike the federal regulation, which assumes everything will be done in rush. Um, we will work over time with the departments of the city, but we are also really expecting the city to show leadership. We want what we accomplish to also be in some way shared with other communities in the area who have similar obligations and see what we can do to uh, you know, really raise the bar in terms of municipal ADA compliance. Chris, I also felt at that meeting it was opening the door for all the department heads to realize the Commission on Disabilities is a civil rights. It's a civil rights. That's big with me. And being with the district attorney's office and working in there under civil rights, I think a lot of department heads were listening very carefully about the laws and people with disabilities. And I think now that we've opened the door, we'll be coming back. We'll keep coming back. And training and educating is very, very valuable. Because I can guarantee you, here we have an ADA coordinator who doesn't know all the laws, and the other ADA coordinator also didn't have all the experience. And I know for a fact with the interviewing process, 
There was nothing there about an ADA coordinator and the responsibilities. And when I went to you, Chris, I needed help on that because we're selecting somebody who should have knowledge. And I think having the human resource department there, them realizing the value when you're interviewing candidates and you're gonna make them an ADA coordinator, that the qualification should be there also. And it certainly has been open that one of the major issues that's been raised is what long term should be structurally done in terms of the ADA coordinator position. The more we do, the more active we are, the more issues that are brought forward, uh, the more it adds to the more than full time that Linda is already putting in in the responsibilities for running senior services. So we're looking ahead to a possible point and we don't know how that might be done or what might be done. Um, our measure in the meantime is that Andra has joined to, to provide some support and we're putting in significant amount of volunteer time which we will continue to do. Um, but um, we'll see what happens. So tell me the proprieties. Can um, Deandra as our um, staff support, can you, I don't know, Robert. I didn't hear that. Can we have a little conversation okay. with Deandra? Is that? You're the one who tells me, Marianne, how we uh, run appropriately a public meeting. So I, I would like to say, you've been such a great help. Not only have we gotten to do surveying and record pictures, but it's been fun, you know? And we weren't sure that it was gonna be a lot of fun. And then, and then yesterday, too. Yeah. And it meant so much to us when you said, that um, if you are leaving next semester to Geneva, that when you come back, will we still be doing this? There's no question we'll still mm -hmm. be doing this. We're not going yeah. nowhere. And we'd be so happy to you know, have you uh, rejoin us. You've been wonderful. <laughs> we'll miss you. I'll miss you guys as well. I also want to acknowledge Ruth, too, because, yes. I mean, this is a, a really important component, our website. Again, that was acknowledged that we weren't up to code for our website. In fact, it's, it's almost obsolete, basically. So, you know, and, and she's doing, a, a, you know, a lot of um, self-education and getting a lot of support from um, some people that really know their stuff, too. So we're going to look really good in just a little bit longer. And Ruth, while you are not um, formally now a member of the commission, no. you're continuing to work with the uh, center. Oh, yeah. That's our yeah. understanding. So you're going to be able to pursue that. I'm going to keep doing the minutes. I'm going to keep doing the agendas. Um, I keep, you know, Judy's going to be our official secretary. Well, I need to be, we need to vote on a new secretary. <laughs> I mean, we need, no, we need to elect a new secretary. I talked with Linda about Ruth. I have great concerns. She's getting paid by the city. Yes, she's a non-voting member. But when we talked about this, she had stressed she still would do the secretary's position, all right, as far as getting paid, because she's getting paid by the city. We can go ahead and make you or whoever wants to be secretary, but she will go ahead and do the minutes and she will do the agenda. And we pay her because she has been told that she would get paid. So why not add that in there of letting her go ahead, do the minutes, you and I get the agenda set up we have to work together and do the minutes. I mean, she'll do the minutes like she's doing now. And you and I will do the agenda and coincide because Linda should not even have to be involved in that. Ah, uh, from the movie. It's so <laughs> I, chopped liver. <laughs> you figure she's here. I don't but you know, before, yes, yeah, absolutely. So we are in accord, but I also have to say that we talked about a very important step. 
you've got this terrific connection yeah. with people who are deaf right. in this community. And we said yesterday at the meeting, Northampton is not racially diverse, but Northampton is disability and LGBTQ diverse. Yeah. And one of the things looking forward that we've talked about is to do something at some point specifically outreach to the deaf community in this city who have, we believe, not had the opportunity that they would have sought to express themselves on public issues. And that's one of the primary areas in terms of the development of policies is to work out the effective communications provisions so that uh, not just as we did belatedly to bring a sign language interpreter in to deal with an issue, but all of the departments hopefully will know um, that when they are dealing with a member of the public whose language is American Sign Language, um, a process that they can follow to make sure that those issues are dealt with appropriately and in a timely way. And we never again see the circumstance of something being delayed so long that someone is displaced from that. And I have, after we talked, I did reach out to some of the people that I know, and they're just kind of waiting for us to get to the point where we want them to come in, but they know we're interested, so. I, I, would, I would think we're, we're moving into the dark of the year. We're moving into the cold. A lot of these activities of public sessions, we might, we might think of in terms of um, the spring. I think there's just a rhythm to the year. And we have a lot of, of basic data still to assemble and some other things. But in terms of public process, I think it, that becomes more more uh, more viable to do it when the weather improves again. Okay. Oh, can I just, when you were talking about agendas and, and minutes and things, just to let everybody know I'm changing the whole system with this month. I have been going you know, now with Chris to Judy and Chris and to Linda, and I never even, sorry, thought about sending it to you. So from now on, what I do is like, um, probably tomorrow or sometime this week, send an email out to you, to both of you and to Linda, and ask for any topics you want to put in. I go through the minutes and anything that was like tabled from the month before or anything we said we needed to get information on, I'll put that in automatically, and then I'll compile everybody's agendas into one agenda and then send that out to you. And let us look at it. Um, yeah, this month we, we have, ran out of time. We are also of aware that you were moving this month. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so we oh. have two <laughs> tremendously important developments here. Exactly. You know, a new baby, a new home, and, and may yours be a, be a happy and healthy and wonderful. Thank you. And then I've been sending the minutes to Judy and Chris, and then they add and multiply and make them big, and then the last two you have months, to send them to me also. Yeah, the last two months I didn't get them back. Before that, they would send them back with all the changes. Yeah, I'd like but to have them Because sent it was me. so close this month, there wasn't time. I would like to have right. them sent so, to me. Right. Okay. And do you want me to send you a copy as well? No, or just I'm, when they're all I'm done? I'm very happy that, you know, everybody is involved in this process. Okay. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. And now I've been trained. I put things on the calendar for the city. I post the agendas and I post the minutes. Minutes don't get posted until after they're approved by the commission. You had a problem getting into the website like I did. Because yeah. when you or I were on the phones, we couldn't get into it. The city's website stinks. I'm sorry. It's awful. It's the world's worst. Their agenda was posted. Linda did it for uh, Pam did it for us because I couldn't get in. Pam got in, she posted it, and then we couldn't see it. It kept coming up and asking us for our email. I would try to get into it and download it, nothing. Yeah. She tried it right on the phone. We were talking, nothing. Yeah, so I called Frank. He got, He's the one for the city, uh, the Frank who got my job. I don't remember his last name, but um, he got it straightened out so we could get in. And at the same time, he changed my password, and now I can't get in again. <laughs> so I have a month to deal with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> But this but eliminates a headache for Linda. Oh, yeah. Well, that's Linda, why my, my, my support person would be putting it on anyway, so it wasn't that bad, but, but it's so nice. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy. Exactly. Just get the minutes after they've been reworked exactly. by, by our secretary, and you know, it's perfect. So I mean, here's the process as I understand it. We are going to 
elect a secretary. I can't. If Judith is willing to do it. The process, though, will be you will be transcribing the, the rough minutes, as we've said. Right. You will distribute those. Um, it will be the secretary has the responsibility for the editing and producing those. Others will comment, but the point at which the minutes will be produced as they're presented to the meeting will be by the secretary. And we will provide input in terms of agenda and bring that um, up together to be sure that we have the issues appropriately. Right. And when everybody changes the minutes the way they want, and I say everybody, it's just Marianne and Chris and Judy. The regular members just see them after they publish. If they want to say something needs to be amended, we do that at the meeting. Exactly. But um, right. I'll take them, and just all I do at that point is pretty them up, put the headings back up at the top of the page, line up the paragraphs, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then I put them up, uh, I email them to everybody, and uh, then Linda makes copies for the meeting. Minutes are extremely important. Important. Every commission, every city council meeting, every city council committee meeting we have, or even the board meeting here, those minutes are valuable. Mm -hmm. If there is a lawsuit, those are subpoenaed into court. Yeah. So language is extremely important. One other thing goes on those minutes. Part of the reason that we've been investing more time in the editing of the minutes is exactly. that we've been making reference to some legal principles like reasonable modifications to exactly. policy and practices. So we wanted to be sure that those key points were reflected with the right language so it's reflective right. of the the body of law that we're referring to that's what we're trying to do we're trying to get away from colloquial and informal and uninformed statements about disability law and and get it on to the solid ground of accuracy i have to say another thing at the meeting it was really a pleasure to have uh, pam powers there now as our elected city clerk i think she's going to be one of the one of the lead people in terms of helping us really facilitate this process and as always uh, wayne's work in support of what we've been doing and seeking monies through the massachusetts office on disability <laughs> um, he awesome. is quite extraordinary yes and he did it once again yes and in fact that is our uh, that is our next topic. Definitely a good one. So, as you all know, we had submitted a previous grant to the Massachusetts Office on Disability and secured the, the dollars with which we brought in uh, the two consultants, Melissa Marshall and Jacqueline Bergen. And we were able to move fairly quickly in a ridiculous time frame. I think we got the money in early June and we had to have it expended essentially two and a half weeks later. Um, and with Wayne's strong uh, support and assistance, we managed to do that first part. Now we have been, um, had an opportunity to submit another um, proposal, another request to the Massachusetts Office on Disability. The first round, their fiscal year for the state was ending on June 30th. That's why we were on such a tight time constraint. For this year, they once again have a very small amount of money, a million dollars going across the whole state. Um, but we uh, were in concurrence about what the priority should be. The priority from at least our preliminary discussions uh, was that the conditions are absolutely deplorable behind City Hall and between the back of City Hall and the annex and some of the walkways leading to it. So immediately adjacent to the park, which has been so well redeveloped with its very nicely done, um, well surfaced walkways, you go into a tremendously hazardous environment 
uh, particularly if you're on your way, for example, to city council meeting. One of the things I, I do think I said yesterday, correct me if it's only my recollection, but was that Frances Crow came to the meeting at 98 years old uh, with her walker and after the meeting had to traverse, as all pedestrians do, a very seriously deteriorated environment. That area is the uh, priority that has been submitted with our, our request for, I'm not sure what the formal amount is, essentially asking for a quarter of a million from the state then with some contributions uh, from the city. Are we likely to get a quarter of a million? No, that would be one fourth of their entire uh, for, the, for the state. Um, but we may get some, and at the very least, what we've done is to make publicly that area as a priority, and um, other priority areas will be defined as we we further you know, develop our, our documentation. Unfortunately, I suggested to Wayne a cover photo for the report, <laughs> which is of these two characters. <laughs> I'll show you the picture sometime. It was a joke. We, we, did get, we did get one picture of Judy's foot stepping into one of those deteriorating cracks, but, but these two with Deandra catching Judy. You could not submit that to the Massachusetts Office on Disability. Okay. So it's also it's not just the, it's also the ramp that goes to the accessible entrance of town hall and the stairwell that goes from there down to round, the Roundhouse Plaza, where there's a lot of parking and frequently used. The ramp that descends both from Main Street, the front, and from Main Street, and from the, the back, and and of course that winds a little bit. It has a handrail on only one side. Um, we would at least like to see a repair of the surfaces there and we would like to see at some point handrails on both sides, that would be nice. which is much more secure. We always say, you know, imagine a person who's have a plegian. They have mm -hmm. strength and on only one side. Okay. You need to have handrails on both. The stairs that descend from the back of the plaza, and they descend down the very steep hill towards the, the roundhouse, have not only is the surface deteriorated, but those are non-compliant handrails in that they are shaped essentially like a two by six, right? And the code requirement is that a handrail has to have a gripping surface. Mm -hmm. Again, imagine the person using the stairs who doesn't have a lot of strength and now they're losing their balance they have to grasp you have to have a gripping surface to be able to secure it if you were trying to grab the two inch wide edge of a board your hand is much more likely to slip off so that was the logic of those first priorities that we um, were requesting some funding for we did say before as we assemble the observations we pulled together, we need to have a wider discussion with public input to really get a solid long-term set of priorities defined. Okay? Chris? Yes. Just like to add, I have fallen the, the handicap spot right by um, where you go in for city council meetings. Mm -hmm. That whole area right there is all broken. And and I have that's fallen there. The best area and we're talking about. And you have fallen there? Oh, I fell. Then we dealt with it about a year ago, and they said, oh, we're going to fix it, and it never happened. Uh-huh. Well, that's okay. very interesting. So what is our next step? We've asked for money from the state, but fixes can't wait for the money to the state. The whole area would be pretty extensive, but we need to have some repair and leveling of those surfaces in, um, in the short term. Everything isn't going to be recast, but certainly you know, patching and leveling and, and 
an interim fix for that area. How would we go about that? Reasonable <coughs> accommodations. Well, Chris, well, what's in the, uh, the DPW's budget? I mean, in terms of the city property, and it's a safety hazard. It's like, it's like anything else that needs to be addressed. So should we be meeting first with DPW about that? Right, and I, I think we should talk to Wayne, of course, to inform him, but. I was just gonna suggest that. I think we should have a meeting with Wayne and also talk with the mayor. They're looking at money that's coming out of the Department of Public Works budget. Okay, right now, we are looking at, with the Department of Public Works, of getting all their plows ready and everything. The salt costs a humongous amount of money. Okay, so I think if you're gonna have a meeting, go to Wayne, but also I think you should talk with the Department of Public Works Director, Linda Lascalia, and also with the mayor. It's really kind of shocking to me that that, be, where there's so much traffic, between people going in to pay their bills and going to selecting and all of that, that, that it's some of the worstly deteriorated asphalt and sidewalks in the city. It's been like that for a long time. Yeah. Is coming shot? out of that, the side road coming in back of City Hall, mm -hmm. coming out of that door, that side door. Mm -hmm. I was with the mayor, but he wasn't mayor at that time. He was a counselor at large and Gay was behind us, and there was broken curbing, all right? She fell, split her head right open right up there. And sometimes you have to do what you have to do. And the family handled it. It was done over. Sometimes you have to go on the outside. So we have two reports of falls in the immediate I environment. fell out there on that sidewalk we yeah. were talking Three about. Three reports of falls. It's awful. Is it, where is the city actually is doing a sidewalk plan? Is that correct? Pardon? The the city is doing a sidewalk plan now. Exactly. It's and, completed. And and so I what, haven't seen it. So where does this go? So they have a sidewalk plan. And, you know, do they have funding set aside for it? I don't know. Okay, that's you back know, to Wayne. Here's a, my okay, you should talk with the mayor about mm. We need the yeah, sidewalk plan. This plant. needs to be expedited. This needs to be fast-tracked. Because mm -hmm. those are demonstrably, that's why I, I mentioned in the meeting Frances Crow right. you know, crossing over there in, uh, in her water. Mm -hmm. And you now know, we have reports fact, of several falls. Explain to Chris how long that curbing area where the handicapped parking is, and I went to them and said this is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Remember that? Oh, yeah. You had a problem. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. This problem the DPW. So this was raised some time ago. Oh, yeah. It that was a promise to fix it. it. Mine it was hasn't happened. No. Mine was probably about five years ago. My fault. How was my maybe two years? Probably. Around two years ago. So this is going on quite and a And they while. patched. That's what they did. Well, even if you patch, then you have to repatch and you have to repatch. It's not, it's unacceptable. We have a basic principle of what we call, it's almost like spring cleaning, you know? At the end of each winter, you go back. Mm -hmm. And that's why you fix for the longer term, because otherwise you're just gonna pour more money into what are temporary solutions. But how can we how can we actually move this process and, and I would it? suggest having a meeting with the Department of Public Works director, talk with Wayne Biden also, because it's not gonna come out of Wayne's budget. We're looking directly No, it's it's only a courtesy because Wayne has been doing our taking the lead on planning on the planning part of it. Right? Yeah. Exactly. They might be at a point of addressing the sidewalks, you know, if if their plan is all if exactly. completed. So I think that the first next step would be to talk to Wayne to see what this means. You know, then there, there might be some capital improvement monies put aside for it. Because right. um, Donna is involved highly okay. with the plan on sidewalks because it's the Department of Public Works who will be handling it, not the planning department. It will be the Department of Public Works who handles 
redoing all the sidewalks over and so forth. Everything comes out of that budget. I'm a little curious here because here we have the park, okay? That's recreation. CPA funding, you can get under recreation. Just like historical preference, preservation, you get money for that. So, I don't know. Well, we are so trying to get some money from Mass Office on Disability. Okay. Right. There are really two levels here. There is a longer term extensive refixing of the whole area, which is tremendously deteriorated. And then there are the short-term patching fixes, which we know tend to deteriorate, so you have to come back to them. Um, but I don't think we can you know, wait for the long-term fix because it's imminently I hazardous. Agree. So oh, could, could we do in quick succession inform Wayne that we are wanting to talk with DPW, expedite it, and inform the mayor? And what I would like to see is that we get the report from the consultant on the sidewalks. What's the recommendation? To me, that's valuable. Okay. And that's from the sidewalk plan? Yep. Um, he made the consultants went through the whole city. Not just here, Florence right down the line. And I'd like to see it. But I think tomorrow when I go to City Hall, I'm going to see and talk with the mayor if I can have it, because I'd like to read that report. But we, at the same time, have both by council and the area where our, we had the previous public information from, uh, uh, from uh, Emma that she was forced into the street because yep. of deteriorate conditions um, and then was hit by a car. And complaint by um, uh, Laura Rocher, who directs disability services, at Smith that there are areas where she has to go into the street. So I think this is like the opening for the, the conversation we need to have with DPW and with the mayor, Definitely. is how do we address these dangerous areas identified on an expedited basis, which is not the same as waiting for a major capital investment to fix a hole. You know what, Chris? I'm going to use and give you an example of the mayor was here. He was here. We have been waiting. I'm just going to give you an example here. Sidewalks versus roads. I have people in my ward who are in wheelchairs, who have wheelchairs. We don't have sidewalks. And when you have deplorable road conditions and you cannot ask us in a wheelchair, it took me seven years seven years, with no money, no money, to be able to have my residents have a good quality of life on Sylvester Road. They're happy. They go out there on their wheelchairs, my elderly, no sidewalks. Otherwise, they stay in, and they cannot ask us out. Now they can. Park Hill Road, which you saw, took me nine years. Nine years. <laughs> now, my, my ribs, thank you. Yeah, oh, thank you. And we have Pertzburg Road. You saw I had a resident come in. I wrote up the language on a petition. You were there that night when he came up to speak. We had 151 signatures. The road is so deplorable. I have elderly. I have people who are handicapped. Can't ask us on that road. Nothing but potholes, and I call them in all the time. And you should take a ride over there and take a look how deplorable that condition is. On that language that I had written up was, we're not waiting five years, because you're looking at people's quality of life. So we have a problem here. We have the rural areas, okay, who have to ask us on a road because of no sidewalks. And then we have a city to accommodate everybody also. So it's money, money is the big yeah. thing here. I would love to see the area that we need to be done by City Hall because it's been a long time on that. Yeah. So I think overall we have a huge, with the Commission on Disabilities, of looking not just in the center of town, on the outskirts. Yeah. And people yeah. have said that to me. 
That's huge. Well, the, the kind of dual edge is you've got a general planning process in the city, and we know that's terribly slow. And then we've got those reports of specific conditions that right. are affecting particular individuals, and, and how those two are, are worked out with the proper balance. I think one of the things we're concerned about, when you look at the plan and the report from the consultant, will um, what they have put down as a plan uh, pass the real world eye and bump test? You know, will the consultant have basically seen what we would concur are the priority conditions? But I don't think we want to wait for long-term capital investment if something becomes imminently dangerous. Well, to me, we have to wait. We had to wait five years, seven years, whatever, under deplorable conditions. That has been a long time in the area that you're talking about, a long time. And I will support that move 100%. Yeah. Okay. Wayne, Wayne, then Mayor, will be in discussion, okay? Yes, and we will moving. refer to your, yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. The last regular item on our agenda is the ribbon cutting for the new bench. That bench looks beautiful. Okay. So, um, I, I, you know, I don't know how much publicity, I mean, you let me, tell me what you want to do here for the celebration. Patty's coming. Okay. And I told you that already. Yep. And it's on the 22nd. I gave you the, the you date. You did. About three weeks ago. Um, it's on the 20th. 24th. On the 20th? I don't know. i got to open my calendar. At 2 o'clock. Yeah. Here. Um, the, the, I do remember the whole scenario where I think for a few years the bed, a bench has been ordered um, in, in um, from the recognition from the Disability Commission. Okay, yes, yes, and yes. it's finally there, and it's sitting there ready to get that ribbon cut. So Does the city have a official one year cut? I don't months? know. I don't know. We, we did that for our $60,000 van, but we didn't have official ribbon cutting set this, uh, um, uh, scissors. So, you know, we, I don't know, you know. We did up in Florence. We had official benches. Wow. Should do is, uh, we had such a hard time getting those benches on there. <laughs> yeah. The Gazette, you know, two doors down, maybe they'll yeah. send a photographer and get a nice picture of it in the paper. That's something that would go with like the front page of the second section because it's a local thing. And yep. You can give them notice. I think they would send somebody. That's a good idea. Sometimes <laughs> they don't, but we will ask. Well, yeah, either great. You know, great. You know, we'll look at it. You can always, you know, we can always suggest. Yeah. So I think your, your question is part of what else should be done for for that day. Yeah. We could have some light refreshments. Yeah. And and Marianne suggested that, and I'll order the refreshments for us. Yeah. What would you like for refreshments? Lobster something beer. Something. <laughs> <laughs> Something very simple. Yes, something very simple. Cookies. Cookies. No, just like cheese and crackers and grapes. Cheese and crackers, grapes and cookies. If you're going to have great coffee and tea. Are going to be invited to this? Are we going to have the public in there to get it? If we can get something in the paper, that would be the best way because it's doesn't fit into the um, the, the, the Chronicles already. The November Chronicles been out for a while. You know who to call at the Gazette, right? I, um, do you have someone special? Yeah. Of course she does. Of course she does. Um, I and um, so who is going to speak? Mary Ann? No. Patty. I didn't hear you. This is also um, really uh, Patty is coming back to this. Oh, you yes. know, Patty did, did such good work for the city Let for so be. long. You and Patty, I would suggest. Should the current chair give the introduction? I will introduce you. <laughs> <laughs> I am Patty. But I can't yeah. be held responsible for what I'm going to say about you. <laughs> I don't care. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what we will do. I mean, we can have all of us together. Right. 
get a picture for the website. <coughs> Oh, right. Very yeah. good. The, the I'll second. tell you one thing, Chris. If we try to put one in the bench up and fly. DeAndre, you hear that? Oh, my God. Yeah, we want to call that. That's perfect. Oh, people oh, love the bench up you. there. Oh. <laughs> Is this for Thanksgiving? Don't yeah. worry, I'll be back. Oh, okay. You're not going out to date <laughs> <you know. laughs> This is November, right? Yeah, this Next is week, Monday. Right. right. So, <laughs> do, do we have any other um, any other business? Oh, yes. Uh, we do have to. Yes. I will, I'll move that we uh, elect Judith Kimberly as our new uh, secretary. Yes. Yeah. Is there a second? Yeah. Second. Any discussion? I I am willing to do this if I can continue to have. Ruth's wonderful support, and I can work closely with Ruth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. work with all of us. Well, yes, but she's the one who, 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 who got records it. records it, so. Where's the rough? I, okay. I, okay. Yes. Sorry, you have to vote. Thank you. Yeah. Should yeah. we talk about the mailbox? All in favor? Uh, uh, I, all opposed? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Here we go. You got it. All yours. But I know she's the one who gets me to meetings on time. So. There you go. Um, That's one of my functions. It's oh, you know what we forgot? Um, Letitia, about the Christmas party. See, I was thinking the bench is the combination. I agree. Because we're not going to yeah. do an additional. It's too busy. Mm -hmm. So what do we, what's the date on December? Do we have a date on December? Or we do need oh, for our next meeting? Yeah, we do have a date. Yeah, it's the 12th, I believe. It's the 12th, yeah, the Christmas 12th? Okay. Uh, December 12th. At 5 o'clock, okay, got it. Huh? I'm trying to find my report. Very good. Well, Any other business? Um, yes, I have, I'm sorry, I have one thing. I received this uh, I, um, um, in the mail. Um, the, from Starvos, um, the Disability Action Networks of Hampshire, Hampden, and Franklin County are going to be meeting here December 5th um, at t from 2 to 3:30. So, if and they're you know basically they're inviting anyone who wants to talk about um, uh, communities more accessible for people for persons with disabilities. So, December 5th. Yes. Can I have one quick thing? It's, it's, I don't know if it's kind of related, but. What is that? Ruth, I, didn't, I can't even oh, call it. Send it down. Jennifer Lee. It's the Sarah Bruce's Action Committee. Remember the last training they brought it up? They were going to start holding this group. They didn't have a meeting here. You can look at it. I don't know. I'll just see you there. I'll be real quick. 30, Thursday night, the okay, chamber Thursday night, the. Okay, Chambers are. Thursday, the chamber is going to take up. I, I think there's going to be some discussion about. Uh, I don't call them surveillance cameras, I call them safety cameras. Uh, I know there's been a lot of uh, discussion about this in the city. Uh, I'm one of the proponents of it, and I think it kind of impacts us because to the extent that people disabled are maybe a little bit more vulnerable downtown, it would be nice if, if we had that, that safety of, of, of cameras if something happens. And I'd encourage you if anyone's for them to, to speak during the public comments on Thursday at the chamber. Where? At the, uh, yeah, the city council chamber meeting at 7 o'clock. I think it's ultimately, uh, the good outweighs the bad. Right, I, we beg to disagree with you on that. I I, you as I said, having been approached in my past by a prosecutor bearing the picture taken from a surveillance. And it's camera. amazing right now because some of the owners who were against it, and I've been at their businesses, and now they're saying, well, you know, because the cost is at $80,000. At $80,000, everybody wanted community policing in the city. We can take that money and put in for another community policing officer on Main Street. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the business people, some of them are saying now, well, you know what? Prices go down in a couple of years. Well, so I would suggest this this remains a controversial topic. Yes, in town. and it is. And we thank you for the invitation right. to come and potentially speak pro or con yes. before the chamber. Be prepared because another you're going to sign in early. Democracy. Yeah. Yes. What time is it? Like? You think I should be there at quarter of seven? 
I would say about quarter up if you want to be the first one. I, and, and I do. Out. In fact, I'm supposed to give a presentation for Navi for their family to family class in Greenfield, and they're going to uh, have me go last so I can do the, set, the three minute talk and then drop off to Greenfield. So I'm going to be back. And we start right at 7 o'clock, yeah. open public session. You have three minutes to speak. Okay. I guess yes. that, uh, Any other? I, I just before. I just wonder if anybody has heard or knows how to get in touch with Hannah, who has not shown know. up to a, a, a commission. How many meeting meetings has she missed now? I think she's three. missed three. I haven't seen her recently. Sometimes I do see her downtown. I saw her. Car. Yeah, I mean sometimes I'm because my office is downtown, and sometimes I see her. I say hi to her. I can certainly next. I it just I, I don't think I've actually physically seen her in a while, but I will definitely. I, think, be able to I don't think she's her. in Northampton. She, she, she lives out of town. Well, she she was on. I, I would, would say let's. We'll I would suggest we we don't discuss exactly someone's what I would personal suggest, situation. I, I we do know that she do. has not been able to attend. Therefore, I think we have to assume that she is no longer an active member of the commission. Let's make a reasonable effort to try to inform her if we have an old postal or something. We have her old address. The bylaw state if you miss three meetings. Exactly. Three meetings not being excused, just not showing up. That um, I think it's fairly clear three meetings not excused. Well, what I've done in the past when this has come up is done a list for the last year of what meetings they've attended and what ones they've missed. So you have more than just the immediate as history. And then the bylaws say we take that to the mayor. Exactly. Oh, that's true. Yes. Um, I think I have her, her um, address. Okay. Should we make an attempt to get in touch with her and then yes. just then move to have her taken off of the commission if we if she if she's moved she, out of town she, she has no choice she's that's right be on the commission yes. so but I'll put that list together and get it to, to Chris and good so thank know. you yeah so the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn so I mean, and the time is 6.05. We are, we are adjourned.